From time to time, I make a video showing the bikes that I'm currently riding, and I call it My Bike Fleet. So this is My Bike Fleet version 2020. A lot of people have been asking me to make this video, so here it is. All the bikes that I'll show in this video are ones that I own, ones that I've purchased. Now, I do get demos in from time to time, but the way I typically run my YouTube channel is I will buy the bike. Now, I do get industry discounts, which really helps me do that, but I like buying them because I can hold on to them as long as I want. Sometimes it's three or four months, sometimes it's a year or two. Typically, my bike fleet is a gravel bike, a cross-country mountain bike, a trail mountain bike, and an enduro mountain bike. Now, I'll show in this video, I've got two trail bikes temporarily, and I'll tell you the story behind that when I get to them. I'm gonna start off showing the gravel bike, and as I go over the bikes in this video, I won't do anything close to a review. I think I have a review or first look or something on all the bikes that I'll show in this video, but I just wanna put them all together in one to show you the ones that I'm riding. So my current gravel bike is a Niner RLT9 RDO. I don't have experience riding a vast variety of gravel bikes, but I can tell you this is the best one that I've ridden to date. It's full carbon frame, pretty much stock except for the saddle, and I also have a Stages power meter on it. This is the only bike that I'll show in this video that has a power meter, and it's perfect for me because when I want to get out and do intervals, uh, you know, having a power meter on the gravel bike makes the most sense. One thing that I love about having a gravel bike is I just open my garage door and start pedaling. About eight minutes away, I start my gravel routes, and I'm fortunate to have a huge variety of gravel roads in my area. I don't really travel a lot doing gravel rides out of state. Most of it's in state. Unfortunately, we have a pretty big gravel scene where I'm at. So this is the gravel bike. Like I said, it's pretty much stock. I do have a two by system on it. I don't like one by for gravel because I get too big of a jump in the rear cassette and I ride a pretty flat area. So sometimes you gotta find just that perfect gear. That's why I like running a two by. It's got the Stans Grail wheels. It's got Shimano GRX and an Easton crank set. On my gravel bike, I typically have a Garmin Edge 1030. I don't have it on the bike right now. I use a mirror and then I have a rear blinking light and I carry my tube, tire lever, you know, Allen wrench and some cash in the back. And that's it. So I don't really do any bike packing or anything with this. It's really capable for that if I ever wanted to get into that. But I mainly just go out for gravel rides that vary between one hour and six hours. So that's the gravel bike, the Niner RLT9 RDO. Moving on to the mountain bikes, I'll start with the Enduro bike, which is the version two of the Transition Sentinel. So I had version one for about a year and just got this one a few months ago. And I really like this bike. And I wanna say right now that the two main companies that I work with are Transition and Niner. And these are companies that I actually sought them out because I really like riding their bikes. I've never been paid to do any bike reviews. So again, these are companies that I've developed a relationship with over the years because I like riding their bikes. I just wanna mention that. Of all the types of riding that I do, my favorite thing to do is to go up to the mountains, find enduro type trails, particularly areas like Pisgah, North Carolina, and just come down rocky, rough descents. That's why I own the Sentinel. And this bike of all the ones that I show is probably the one that gets the least amount of ride time just because of the area that I live. Again, it's my favorite type of riding, but it's the riding that I do the least currently. So this is the build with the SRAM XO. This bike weighs about 31 and a half pounds. I really like this Fox X2 shock. It's got a Fox Performance shock up front. SRAM brakes, one-up carbon handlebar, really nice one-up dropper post. And this bike is pretty much stock with the exception of the IRC tank and tires. This bike comes with really good tires. I'm just wrapping up my review of these tank and tires and it's gonna be a positive one because I really like them. DT Swiss M1700 wheels. This bike has 150 mil travel in the rear and 160 up front. And of course it is a 29er. So this bike is made for like I said, just rough, gnarly, technical downhills. It's your typical Enduro bike that is pretty steady in the climbs. It's not gonna get up as fast as a cross country bike or even a trail bike, but on the way down with the head angle that's about 63 and a half degrees, this thing is ultra planted, stable. Uh, again, it's the funnest type of riding that I do and really enjoy riding this bike. Now I'll show the trail bikes and my trail bike for a while has been the Jet 9 RDO absolutely love riding this bike. Nothing but positive to say about this bike. But I've also got my hands on the Transition Spur. And this is a bike that Transition let me ride and demo for a while before they released it. And now I own it. So I bought it from Transition because 
I want to do a pretty long term review and I didn't want to have to worry about sending this back and holding on to it too long. So at the end of this year, one of these bikes will be out of my fleet and I'll go back to having three mountain bikes. So let me talk about the Jet 9 first. This is a bike that is probably the, the, the one of the funnest bikes that I've ridden. And a lot of that is the geometry of this bike and the frame stiffness. The frame on this bike is built just to where it is so laterally stiff, but the suspension is so compliant and I have a blast on this bike. So this is the four star Shimano XT build. And this bike is pretty much stock. Even the saddle, I have stock on this bike and I'm, I'm looking over it. I don't think I've changed anything out. So this bike has Fox suspension. So it's got a Fox factory with the Kashima coating on the back. And then it's got the Kashima coating Fox fork on the front and it's got Shimano XT. This is the only bike in my fleet, only mountain bike I should say, with Shimano brakes. And although I prefer Shimano brakes because they use mineral oil and they're easier to work on, I actually like having uh, SRAM brakes for the modulation because these brakes have such initial bite. It takes a little bit of getting used to when I hop off of my cross country bike or enduro bike. Now, after I've spent a ride or so on this bike, I get really used to the brakes and don't mind them. I just wanted to throw that in there. So the Jet 9 RDO has 130 in the front, 120 mil travel in the back. Of course, it is a 12 speed. So this is the new Shimano 12 speed and it's got DT Swiss rims. Everything on my bikes is tubeless, all the wheels to include the gravel bike, by the way. And it's got Maxxis tires. So this is a bike that I probably ride most often when I go to the mountains of North Georgia, even North Carolina, like when I go to DuPont, this bike is a little bit more fun to ride than an Enduro bike. It's lighter than the Enduro bike. There are a lot of trail systems around Florida where I live, like Alafaya, Santos, uh, Bomboyette, and other trail systems that are kind of hilly and ones that I don't like riding a cross country bike when I really want to open it up and go up and down the steep, short technical descents. This bike has a 67 degree head angle and it's pretty light and agile. And again, everything comes together on this bike to make it super fun to ride. Like I said, the other trail bike in my fleet right now is the Transition Spur. And I'll be doing a long-term test on this bike and make a decision at the end of the year if this is gonna be my main trail bike or the Niner Jet 9 will be my main trail bike. So this bike has 120 mil travel in the front and also 120 in the rear. This is a pivotless rear suspension design. This bike is very light. So this bike weighs, I think about 26 and a half pounds, whereas the Jet 9 is about three pounds heavier. Now the downside to that, and I'll mention it in the review coming up, is the fact that the frame is a little less stiff on this bike. So it's lighter. It's probably gonna climb a little bit better than the Jet. But when you're really popping from corner to corner, you can feel the frame flex. Is that good? Is it bad? I haven't determined yet. I'm really going to decide how I like it when I get it up into the mountains in another four to six weeks from now. So this is the build with SRAM XO. It's got DT Swiss XR 1700 wheels, some really nice Maxxis tires. This is probably one of the most unique bikes that I've ridden. It kind of, you know, the best way to describe it is it climbs like a cross country bike and descends like a trail bike. It's got a lot of component specs that make it look like a cross country bike. And then it's got geometry and tires that are more in the trail bike category. So this is a bike that really pushes the envelope in my opinion. It totally blurs the lines between cross country and trail. So it's got a head angle that is 66 degrees and it's got a fairly steep seat tube angle. I think it's like 76 and a half. It's got a pretty short stem and a wide bar. So again, it's really a blend of components and geometry between trail and cross country. This also is a very, very fun bike to ride, especially in my local area where the trails can be a little steep and technical on some of the trail systems. And I'll be getting some miles on this bike and doing some follow-up reviews on the transition spur. Last but certainly not least is the Niner RKT9, which is my cross country bike. This is a bike that's been in my fleet probably longer than any other bike that I've had in recent history. I've had this bike about two years, just put a brand new set of wheels on it. So I've got the Stans Podium SRDs, which I've already done a little unboxing of these wheels. And so far, I really like these wheels. I'm not really gonna get into that in this video. So I was really trying to make the decision, do I sell this bike and use the transition spur as my cross country bike. I've decided against that actually. I'm pretty sure. I haven't fully decided, but that's definitely the direction I'm leaning. 
because this bike is so ultra fast as a cross country bike. And I really don't want to compromise the spur and, you know, shorten the bars and try to make it a little bit more cross country. I want to use the spur as its design and use this bike as its design. And this is probably the best cross country bike that I've owned to date. And cross country is what I do most just because of where I live and even where I work. Right out the back door of my office, I've got about 30 miles of pure cross country trails. And this is my weapon of choice when I hit those trails. Like all the mountain bikes in my fleet, this is a one by 12 system. So this is SRAM XO. And of course it also has the SRAM brakes. And as I mentioned before, I really like the SRAM brakes. I really like the modulation. So all the bikes in my fleet, I think have carbon bars. The other ones have riser bars. This is a flat bar. This is the Jet 9 with 120 mil travel in the front. And that puts the head angle at 70 degrees. And the rear travel is 90 millimeters. I love the build of this bike. I love the Fox suspension with the Kashima coating. This bike can fit one water bottle as all the other bikes that I've shown, mountain bikes that I've shown in this video. Going back to the head angle, there are times when I feel like the 70 degree head angle is a little too steep and then there are times where I feel like it's perfect and one of the deciding factors in making me just want to keep this bike is a recent Tuesday night group ride where it was kind of like a, we call it Tuesday night worlds where we just go out and hammer for a little while and I, this bike was just, it was so fun to ride. I mean people think that cross-country bikes are not fun to ride. On the right trails and the right conditions, they are a blast. And I really enjoy riding this bike. This is the only mountain bike in my fleet that does not have a dropper post. And that's fine with me because most of the trails that I ride this bike on, I don't need a dropper post. And by the way, I do use Shimano clipless pedals on all of my mountain bikes, even my gravel bike. I have some flat pedals that I'll put on from time to time, but most of the time I use clipless just because it's really what I'm used to. Like the Jet 9, this bike uses Niner CVA suspension, which is probably my favorite suspension design. It is really firm when you pedal, and when you stop pedaling, it's pretty plush. And like all the other bikes in my fleet, this bike is full carbon. One last thing that I'll mention is my height because I know people are going to ask if I don't mention this and I'm a little over 5 feet 8 inches or about 173 centimeters. All the mountain bikes that I've shown in this video are mediums and the Niner RLT9 RDO that I showed is a size 53. That is the 2020 version of my bike fleet, the bikes that I'm riding now. Like I said, I'll put links of videos that I've made on these bikes below if you want to check those out. Thanks for watching.